Okay, I wanted to talk real quick about panels, about making your own panels, and uh, what I use. And this is um, Masonite, 1 8 inch. It's, uh, this particular panel has been varnished on this side. I bought it in four by eight foot sheets, cut them down. My original intentions were to do these figures on them. Um, and uh, I got to where I was like, well, it's, it's a little thick, you know, I, for, for like at the level I'm at right now or, or where I'm at, being able to store them is, is an issue. So I'm just really just sewing paper and doing that. But this is, uh, I wanted to show you uh, what we use. And what we're going to do is, is put some uh, muslin on this. And I'm going to show you how I do that. And what that does is give, give the tooth. This is how it looks when it's just gesso. Just like this is a painting in progress. And um, it, uh, you can see where, you know, the gesso. And how slick it is. Uh, like there's no tooth to it. Uh, it's... It's not a bad thing. I mean, there's people that use that, like Robert Bateman, if you're familiar with his work. But like this is a portrait that I did on there, that I did on a piece of masonite that was, like again, you see no tooth at all. There isn't none. It's slick, and it's kind of hard to get used to if you're used to canvas. However, I kind of started out with that, and um, so I'm used to it. But I got away from that when I went to oil because I did use acrylic and I, um, I got used to that canvas tooth that I, I really like. Uh, so what to do? Well, we're, so we're going to use the masonite. Uh, again, one side of it has been varnished. I just took uh, plain old house varnish, rolled over it. That's what I painted on on the figures. I didn't even just sew it, but that seals it. But that will seal the back and then we will put the uh, theatrical muslin on the other side. Now these are some of the tools you're going to want for this project. Of course the masonite panel. Uh, I just use this plastic palette knife, this brush for putting the gesso on. This is called Mod Podge matte. This is the acid-free glue that we will use to uh, attach the muslin to the panel. Of course, gesso. This is what we will uh, coat the uh, to seal the muslin with. I use this. You don't have to have anything like this. Just anything that you can scrape uh, or, or smooth out the uh, muslin. I'll show you soon. Now this is the muslin that I bought. I went to a place here called here in West Virginia called Joanne Fabrics. I, I don't know if they're a chain. I don't think I've ever been in that place in my life. And when I went in, <laughs> you could tell you could tell people were looking at me like I didn't belong. But uh, this is the fabric. It's called a theatrical muslin, and uh, it's cheap. This was I went and bought all that they had, and it was like seven. It's a bolt yards or something like that. And because uh, I first went back to, in the aisle, found it, put it under my arm, walked up front, and the girl said, Well, you're gonna you're gonna have to have that measured back there. I didn't understand that. You go, you you pick it up, you pick out what you want, you take it back to a place, and this this uh, lady was would measure it and give you a ticket to show what it costs. I, this was on sale, really, and I think I only paid like $60, $70 for all of this. And it, it's quite a bit. Only one thing that I would say, uh, this tooth is really, really, really fine. You may want to try, you may want something. So pay attention to that. I just ran in, grabbed it, and, and went home with it. I like it, don't get me wrong. But... I'm experiment with something that had a little bit more of a tooth to it. 
Now I'm going to cut this just slightly oversized. I didn't mention this brush, but uh, this is pretty handy to have too. Not necessary, but just to keep the surface clean. So this is the side that we just or that we varnished, and I don't even know that that's necessary. I like the idea of it keeping it sealed. We're going to glue this side. This glue that we're using, I would tell you a whole lot more about it other than I don't know a lot about it. This some artists use like Elmer's or something like that. That's not archival, if that's the correct word. Um, this is so one day, like a thousand years from now, when they want to pull this off, uh, when they want to pull the muslin off, it's easy, it will come off. I think if you're using like Elmer's or something like that, it could tear it up. I think, I think you can get, her, get the muslin off of this easier. Now, just troweling it on, kind of like you're icing a cake. Now, one of the, there's some positives to using the, uh, these panels. One of them is like if you're, if you're working plain air, I'm making sure I'm going to the edge here. If you're working plain air, the sun doesn't shine through them. Have you ever, have you ever been out painting on location and your stretched canvas gets sometimes the light can come through and um, mess with your uh, with what you're doing uh, not so on these these are easy to store easier to store than a mounted canvas uh, you know just one eighth of an inch thick but mostly you know these are for smaller paintings I don't know what size to tell you to go up, but uh, my larger paintings are all on stretch canvas, and mo mostly because it's just lighter. Because you know a bigger board like this can be harder to handle, I think. But uh, anyhow, I'm just smoothing it on like this. You don't have to fuss too much with it. You just want to make sure that all of the board has the glue on it, and uh, you can let it dry, or we can. Uh, Go ahead and put the muslin on. Okay, now we've got the glue on, and uh, we're just going to take our muslin, lay it over. Again, we've cut it to be bigger than our panel. Just going to spread it out a little. Be careful, and just came through. It'll get on you. And then uh, just going to go to the outside with this and just keep gently working it around putting the scraper whatever you use it, it could be a number of different things but uh, at an angle like this and you see this bubble in here see that that will work out and you can you can lift this pull on a little bit but the idea is to work from the center to the outside and I just keep gently moving it because what I'm doing I'm, I'm allowing the I'm allowing the muslin to set into the glue and gently working the fabric over top of the pan Notice those little bubbles getting smaller and smaller, but I'm just patient with it and just uh, and in the way I paint and, and the paintings that I'm going to use these for, I'm not that concerned about a little bit of a of um, an uneven surface as far as bubbles. Now, if you're doing portraits, I think and this is really good for portraits. It's that. Almost like that uh, fine grade linen. Go over with my finger, pop it down. 
Just smooth it out. It's looking pretty good. Make sure it comes out on the end. We'll trim around it after it dries, after we gesso it and it dries. Pretty good with that, but that's what we're looking at right now. 30 minutes uh, or more has gone by. This is set up good. It's good and dry, ready for gesso. Three thin layers. I'm working it in through the fabric and again I think you're going to want these pretty thin because uh, if you do it too thick you'll cover up all of your tooth. Okay, so we're going to let that dry. Uh, that's a one thin coat. We're going to do two more when this dries. Okay, so it's good and dry. Uh, two pieces that I forgot to mention that we'll need to finish this off is a ruler and a nice sharp blade. This one isn't necessarily nice and sharp, but I'm going to use it anyhow. Uh, so I just turn it over on its back, put the blade, put the uh, ruler down on it just give us some extra guy like wasn't even all on that So that's uh, what she looks like here after the trim. I don't know if you can see that fine tooth. Um, pretty nice. It's bowed a little where uh, the uh, gesso uh, had a little bit of wetness in it. It'll flatten right out. I want you store it flat. And this is what I've used before, and I'm sure you've probably seen something like this. Um, 
And I like these fine, but supposedly they've got like a foam core and they're not archival. So I don't want to give the, uh, the galleries or my clients any type of uh, worry. So I thought I would take matters into my own hands and make my own panels, make them to, my, make them to the size that I want them, and uh, that way ensure that it's of museum quality. As far as I know, this is of museum quality. So we're going to give it a little bit of a tone to take the white off of the canvas, uh, uh, some burnt sienna and uh, yellow ochre. Uh, I've learned that uh, it's best to uh, start off a little warm. And, I, and I'm setting this up for say like, I'm going to do like a plein air sketch outside. Um, I'm finding it's good for about all of my painting. It seems like that it's easier to uh, cool a painting down than it is to um, warm it up. You know, if you start off cool, man, it seems like it's tougher to get it to warm up. Really just to knock the white off there. And I just take a paper towel, kind of go over it, take some of the excess off. Now this is, you can do, it's whatever you prefer to do. And you can come by this by trial and error. But if you notice like, if you start doing this, you can already start to see patterns in it if you're doing a landscape. That comes through. Anyhow, that's uh, that's how I'm making my panels these days. And I hope uh, you'll give it a try. It's easy to do. You you can do it, and you know there's a little bit of an initial uh, investment as far as when you buy your board and um, the um, adhesive and the uh, muslin, but. Uh, after that, I, I think, I don't know what they are, but per piece, like a little piece like this, they're pennies. And knowing that it's museum quality and you can, in, and you can ensure, you can reassure uh, your clients, the gallery owners, of how these are made. Because they're made by you. Thanks for watching.